Greetings guys, it's Irish here. Uh, in this Linux Bytes, I was going to show you guys an alternate uh, file or a web browser uh, to Qt browser, which is called LuaKit. Now, through some of my research, uh, I think LuaKit came first, and then uh, Qt browser came from that to make it a little bit better. Um, but uh, yeah, ever since I moved from uh, put Gen2 on my desktop. Uh, I've been trying to get Cube Browser uh, installed, but I, I just been going in circles trying to get the dependencies uh, to work together and to get this use flag to work with that use flag and stuff like that. So uh, I was going through um, some of my old videos uh, that I used to watch. Uh, so I came across Meshi, who does a a great video on Cube Browser, but he also did a video on LuaKit, and it, it looked interesting because the new version of Cube Browser, you have to go into an HTML config file and figure it out that way. He actually does have a video on that, but with LuaKit, it's uh, you actually have config files that sit in your home directory. Now the big difference between, from what I've seen so far, uh, between the two is that um, LuaKit is based off of the GTK libraries, and Qt Browser is obviously done by uh, based off of the Qt uh, libraries. So that's uh, another thing. So uh, if we open up LuaKit here, I'll just show you what it looks like by default. So the main home screen is the LuaKit website. So now if you know a little bit basic uh, of the Vim, like extensions from Firefox, whatever, even Qt Browser himself, uh, to navigate uh, just by using your keyboard is say you wanted to go to the documentation. So you would hit F. One second. Okay, so say you wanted to go to the documentation, so you would hit F, and then you notice these uh, purple looking boxes. Those are the follow uh, keys. So if we hit zero, you'll notice that this one's green. But you also notice that down here there's a two zero, so you have to decide which one you want. But we're going to go to the documentation, so we just hit enter. And there you go. So to go back, you would say Shift H. But say you wanted to go back into the documentation from here, you say uh, Shift L. So it, they base it off of the Vim keys if you're familiar with Vim. So to go up, it's K. To go down, it's J. Uh, to go right, it's L. And then to go left, it's H. So Shift H is to go back. But you also notice that, the, again, that the follow keys suggestions are in numbers. There is a way to do it for letters. Uh, it actually took me a little bit to, to, to figure that out. So I'll show you guys in the code where you need to put in and where. And then say you wanted to get rid of the, uh, the default uh, home page. So let's just uh, close this out. <clears throat> So after you install LuaKit, uh, you're going to need to make a your own directory. So if you say mkdir.config uh, LuaKit, <clears throat> uh, so you want to put it in the .config uh, hidden folder and then make your own, say, LuaKit. Now I already did that, so I won't do that again. So and then to copy uh, the default configurations, uh, they are actually in the Etsy XDG LuaKit, and you can see them right there. So if we want to copy all of those, you would hit star at the end, and then you would want to put it in your newly created uh, file or uh, directory that you did. So I just did that. So now if we go into that directory, You'll notice that you have the globals, 
uh, rc.lua, theme.lua, webview.lua. So all the web.luas, uh, you don't really need to touch. Um, but the ones that you need to touch are the globals, rc, and then theme.lua. So we'll go into the globals since that's where we set our default homepage. So we say vim globals.lua. And then it's right here under home page. So uh, say you wanted to change this to, uh, we'll just say Gen 2. Uh, yeah, we'll just say Gen 2. ORG. And then save that. Now, as you see down here, uh, you have the global search engines. So you can do DuckDuckGo, GitHub, Google. IMDB and Wikipedia. So those are the default ones, but <clears throat> by default it's, so if you search uh, into it, it does go with Google. So just uh, letting you know. And then you could specify your terminal emulator. Um, so I use URXVT. So I could actually could, uh, we'll uh, undo this. So we'll say term. Uh, you could change the default window size. So when you when I loaded this up, it's actually kind of small. So it is 800 by 600. So you can go whatever size you want. So you can go full screen. But since I'm on um, KDE here, I just maximize it. And if I was on my i3 side of my Gen 2, it would just take up the whole screen anyway. So, so we'll save that. And now exit. So now if we actually open up Lua Kit one more time, you'll notice that we are now into the Gentoo.org. So I'll close that one more time. So now say you wanted to change the following uh, hints from numbers to letters. To do that, <clears throat> it's in the rc.lua. And then all you do, okay, so it's uh go up so you just say backslash and then follow and it'll bring you down to this so now if I'll, I'll show this in the uh, documentation so in the documentation you have uh, the modules so you want to go to the follow and then you see the custom character hint now I thought that you take this code and replace it with this following. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to add it below that. So it needs this following to work. That's why it, earlier in this video, the follow key didn't work because I commented this out by accident. So we'll uh, go to zero. So it's these uh, uh, lines of code that you need. Uh, so it pretty much says select this uh, label maker, which equals the function, and then return these letters here. Now you have to make sure that you do put them in quotations, because otherwise it will not read it. So now if we save it, and once again go back into Lua, get, you'll notice that the follow keys are now letters. So say I wanted to go into inside Gentoo, all I have to do is hit F and then hit DA. And that will load up inside Gentoo. Now go back. If I wanted to open up a new tab, I hit O and then Oh, see, I'm getting the cute browser uh, configurations. So, say you wanted to open up the Latex 001 right here. This will actually open up in a brand new tab. So, in, uh, say, a window manager, this top bar will not be here. So, this is very extremely minimal. doesn't have uh, a lot of stuff like you see in... Um, 
So like a lot of this stuff you do not see uh, in Lua Kit. So we are going to go to SA. And that opened uh, right there. So if we go back. So if we go to our security database, so FA. Hmm, it's not doing it right now. So we'll go back to the Lua kit. So we'll search Lua kit. Show you this uh, here. FS. RS. So say if I wanted to go to this thing here, uh, RA, and then here are the tabs. So to go between the two tabs, you'd say Shift K, sorry, Shift H, You can click with the mouse, obviously, but uh, let me see if I can. Well, I f forget what the combination is here. So to delete this, you just hit D. Let's go back, go back. And now we're back to our home page. So it's interesting. Um, that there are two Vim style, very, very um, lightweight Vim style key binding web browsers out there. One based off of GTK, one based off of Qt. Now, from what I gathered from uh, from this documentation, to change the key bindings, it says. Uh, So it says down here to change it, uh, you say the add binds and remove binds. Now before, um, there was a .lua uh, thing called binds.lua. So now if we go back into their, um, their main page and go down here. It says the configuration here. So the binds.r.lua defines every action in the web browser. So if you press this, it does it quits. Or you say open, it does that. But it's been deprecated in this latest version. So their GitHub page does not match their site. And they don't provide uh they do not provide um example configuration files for the updated stuff so that's a downside I'm gonna assume they're trying to do something similar to the because in the previous versions the binds actually did uh, I believe did control the following action so this is Seca who's one of the admins in the LDC I just searched LuaKit configs and he popped up so felt like it was very uh it was nice so th so it would say menu binds so you're saying j to move down k to move up and then so i'm going to assume that the add binds here is what they're wanting you to put in the rc.lua so as you can see uh, let me see here. Binds, that right here. So I'm going to assume they're going to have you put in that type of code right here underneath the local search because this is uh, with the binds. Uh, also binds and modes here, but they don't tell you where to add the stuff in they do have a web page but or an IRC client I went there I think once and it was kinda dead but to be fair it was in the middle of the afternoon uh, but it was a weekend so I would think more people would be on there than before so but 
I just wanted to show you a brief overview and a little bit of review on LuaKit and show you the little bit of the differences uh, to LuaKit and Cube Browser. Now, between the two, granted, I've only used LuaKit for like a couple weeks now. Now that I got the keybinds and know how to, you know, do the and then do the following to the different uh, following things here. But I think Cube Browser is a little bit more powerful than this. So uh, I think out of the box, if you play a video, it actually has built in HTML5. Uh, so say if you wanted to play this, it should play by default. It's yeah, it's playing. So you don't have to have an external player like MPV or MPD, but or M player. You could do that, but it does play out of the box. But so does browser has the letters instead of the numbers because the numbers are a little awkward because you have to take your hands off of the home key row and do it that way. Um, but there's others that you could. But again, you could configure this to mimic Cube Browser, but I think it would take a lot more work than it's worth. So, but I'm going to still play around with this. Uh, I think it's a pretty cool alternative to Cube Browser and heavy ones like Firefox uh, and Chrome and Chromium. So those are resource hungry. LuaKit and Cube Browser are very light, so it doesn't take that much memory out of that, even when you're playing YouTube channels and stuff like that. So, uh, in the next uh, couple weeks, I think I'm going to start my Arch install series again. Uh, I'm going to do the basic install, and then I'll do the LVM install, uh, LVM plus Lux install that I have. It's very. It's going to mimic what I have on my uh, Arch Linux laptop, and then I'm going to finish it off with the ZFS or ZFS on Arch Linux. There is a way to do it, so I'm going to be researching that. Uh, there really isn't any videos on that, and that's one of the reasons why I make some of these videos is there's nothing out there uh, except for like maybe a one minute, two minute thing, and it's all music, nothing else. Like a lot of the my Herbsluft videos, there was nothing until I started making those. There's very few BSPWMs. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of i3 people or a lot of i3 videos, but when I started that one, there really wasn't that much. And now a lot of people go to like Codecast and stuff like that. So that's one of the reasons why I do these videos is for my sake to, as a reference guide, and to provide stuff out there because uh, I know a lot of people don't like reading technical stuff and figuring out that way and they're more visual. I'm very similar to that but I can read those wiki guides and figure it out that way. But I blow up stuff and I fix it. So, But uh, that's all I have for tonight. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoy your weekend and I'll catch you in the next video.